Howdy, April Breakout. It's Miss Kosh. I am continuing to work through Mr. Passwater's notes. Um, this is something I have already taught with my kids this year. Um, so I just like to show how he does things a little differently than I do and give you access to my way of thinking through his notes, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so talking about the inverse trig functions, what... Um, Okay, we will use either sine to the negative one of x, or we can call it arc sine. Um, with either notation, we would say arc sine when reading it aloud. Um, I usually say inverse sine of x on this, and I would say arc sine x here. So uh, maybe I have been wrong for all these years. Um, do do do. Okay. Anyway, it's the inverse sine of x is is another. I, if that's wrong, well, my bad. Okay, I may have to break that habit. But um, Write the statement this in the equivalent form using arc sine notation. Okay, so what happens is, so basically what arc sine is doing is it's saying arc sine of a ratio equals an angle. Okay, so when you have, this is sine of an angle equals a ratio, then I can say, well, arc sine or sine to the negative one of the ratio would equal that particular angle. Or you could say arc sine of one half equals pi over six. So it's sine of an angle equals a ratio, and likewise it's arc sine of a ratio equals an angle. They are inverse operations of each other. Okay, um, and so we talked about how um, if you have something like, if you have y equals x squared, and you go to take its inverse, you end up getting something like this, and these two pieces right here are not, um, this is the inverse of our original function, but this is not a function unless we get rid of part of it. So what we have to do is we restrict the domain and just keep this part of the parabola. Same exact idea with trig. So what we need is we need to, a piece of the sine curve where we get every y value exactly once. And it's really nice to work with 0, 0. And so therefore we can go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is how we restrict our domain. Um, and so in order to make the inverse of function, we will restrict the function to the domain negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, as highlighted in the figure above. Okay. Um, similarly, we're going to restrict, restrict cosine. Um, so we like to hang on to when x equals 0, and then we need to get every y value, and so we're going to come all the way down here. So the three points that I care about with the inverse cosine are 1, 2, 3, and then you got to get the concavity right. We haven't graphed the inverse yet, but that's the same idea. And so it's 1, 2, 3 points that I care about when we talk inverse sine. Um, so notice cosine, though, restricted our domain to, from 0 to pi. For the tangent function, we will restrict it from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Um, I think I just had, in the last video, we were looking at this one. And so negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is one set of asymptotes and everything in between it. So it's going to give you every y value that happens exactly one time. And that's a mess, but there we go. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, he, I like how he did that. That's very, very lovely. Okay, so the inverse sign, we live between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 up here. Cosine, we live between 0 and pi. And inverse tangent, we live between, see, there I am saying inverse tangent. Okay, whatever. Negative pi over 2 coming this way and then positive pi over 2 that way. So inverse cosine of negative root 2 over 2. As soon as I see root 2 over 2, I know it's the pi over 4 family for sine and cosine. Negative puts me in quadrant 2 with cosine, and so this is a 3 pi over 4. And that is the only answer. So we may talk about this later. If I had said cosine of theta equals negative root 2 over 2, there are actually infinitely many answers to this. Because if you think about it, cosine starts here and kind of goes forever and ever, and I'm making a mess. But then it'll hit, oh, it'll hit that line. Wow, that's terrible. But it'll hit it infinitely many times. This is something different. This is saying the inverse cosine function, I'm plugging in a x value, I'm plugging in one particular x value, and I get one particular y value. Okay, they're similar questions, but they're not the same. Okay, so same idea here, inverse sine of negative root 3 over 2. Um, sine is the y value, I have to go down a lot, um, and so, but I had to get there in the negative direction. So this is negative pi over 3. If you tell me anything else, I hate to tell you, break it to you, you would be wrong. <laughs> okay, tangent of um, pi over 3. Tangent of pi over 3 is that steep one, so that's pi over 3. Did I say pi over 3? I, well, my brain jumped to the answer. I apologize. Tangent, inverse tangent, arctan of root 3 is pi over 3. Whew, 
Okay, something like that. Um, okay, so now what are we saying? An angle theta is in standard position. It intersects the circle at point P, whose coordinates are x, y. Um, reflected, okay, this is what I think was really tricky for my kids this year, and I made some videos to talk through this. Um, okay, so let's see, cosine of x, cosine of x has to equal theta, because it's this angle right here that got us right to that. Um, sine of negative y. So sine of negative y is going to be down here. And because this was y, so then this is negative y. Um, sine has to live between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And so what we did is we went the amount theta, but we went in the negative direction. So this is equal to a negative theta. Cosine of negative x. Well, if this is x, this has to be negative x. And so if this is angle theta, this would also be theta. So this is going to be pi, well, pi gets me all the way over here, and then I can do minus theta to get this amount. So this is equal to pi minus theta. Um, you could also say it's negative theta plus pi, um, but that's the same idea. Um, okay, uh, inverse tangent of negative y over x. So here's y over x, so negative y over x is going to be here, um, because inverse tangent lives in quadrants 1 and 4. Um, and so we got there the negative way, so this is going to be a negative theta. That's a theta, pretend. Okay. Uh, that's the end of his uh, three nine notes. So uh, go study. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. Subscribe.